Welcome to the Florida Manufactured Home Living Podcast. My name is Russell Watson. How many of you can remember the days when you got out of school for the year and looked at the whole summer with nothing to do but play with your friends, dive in a pool, go to a party, catch a tan while you're reading a book, hit the beach, and totally recharge your batteries? That's exactly what a Florida Manufactured Home Community Lifestyle can offer you year-round. Florida retirement communities welcome tens of thousands every year who want more out of their retirement years. In this episode, I will talk about the options available and the reasons a Florida retirement community may just be the spice that takes your retirement recipe from a box dinner mac and cheese to a year-round holiday feast. Oscar Wilde once said, To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist, that's all. You can do more with your retirement than just exist. You can soar with the eagles. Let's start with the big picture, cover the options and the benefits, and then you'll want to stick around to hear my top three tips for deciding on which community will meet your needs. So, Let me ask you if any of these apply to your situation. You find yourself watching more and more daytime TV. Your kids are gone and that big home is just way too big now. All your friends from work are still working and you seem to have less and less in common. Your neighborhood has changed and many folks who were friends have moved on. There just doesn't seem to be a good way to meet people like you did back when your kids were in school. Back when you were working, there were a lot of people who depended on you, and you missed that. The idea of a cold one or a glass of wine is occurring to you earlier and earlier in the day. And those frigid winters filled with shoveling snow and nasty driving just no longer appeal. These are some of the many reasons I hear from folks in my program and on my YouTube channel that have moved down to Florida. The lifestyle in an active community pretty much cures all those, and Florida offers warm weather year-round. Now, housing prices have skyrocketed in the last decade, and it's no different here in Florida. I see ads in HOA communities where homes are being built by the big builders, and they're offering them in the low 300s, but realistically, it's more like the 500s. I have a very close friend who lives in such a community, and they bought their home about 10 years ago for 230000 and she still has a mortgage. But the price of that home today would be somewhere between five and 600000 Now, if you can afford such communities with enough left over to live on, they are an excellent choice and can provide the activities and companionship that draw people to community living. A lot of folks stop at this point and say, we just can't afford it, and they give up. But others will take out big mortgages and wind up right back where they started with their home up north many years ago. Then there's property taxes, HOA fees, and possibly assessments to consider. This is where manufactured home communities shine as a much more affordable alternative, offering the same lifestyle or better. Okay, I know what you're saying, but it's Florida, and there's alligators, snakes, and mosquitoes everywhere. Well, I've been here since 2011, and the only snakes I've seen are the few garden variety that are actually good to have in the neighborhood. I rarely see mosquitoes, although near water bodies, you may find them. Most areas of Florida, which are mosquito prone, get sprayed and that keeps them down. I've lived in communities with lakes and canals and the only alligators I've seen were from tour boats on the St. Johns River. Yes, alligators exist, and yes, you will occasionally read about problems. But those pose little danger compared to everyday activities we undertake, like driving the car. Now, I don't recommend you go down to the Everglades, jump in the water, and start flailing about thinking this is a good time. 
If that's your idea of retirement, you're likely to have a problem. But what is there to do in Florida? Well, if you follow our Florida Manufactured Home Living Facebook page, you'll see posts almost daily highlighting activities across the state. There are beautiful beaches on both the east and the west coast, although they are different. Restaurants can be found throughout the state, and there is really some fine dining here. There are both state and national parks that let you go hiking, camping, paddling, all sorts of things. NASCAR is big in Florida, with a track at Daytona and many smaller tracks throughout the state. Another track in Homestead. The Sebring Speedway provides sports car racing. There's spring baseball with training camps in numerous cities, championship bass fishing, cruises, casinos. There's a lot to do. Well, how about hurricanes you're saying? Don't they just blow those manufactured homes away as soon as they come to Florida? Well, yes, we get hurricanes, although not every year. And hurricanes can be devastating to any form of housing, including manufactured and mobile homes. Some areas of Florida are less prone to hurricane damage, but all areas see hurricanes. I get that story from folks all the time who commented on a video called 12.5K, where a home is shown in a community that's about six miles from the beach. That home was built in 1986 and surrounding that home in communities in the area are thousands of similar homes built in the same time frame. The logic defies me. If all of those homes have been here through every hurricane since 86, how can you believe that your home will be blown away by the first hurricane that hits Florida? There was a 2005 study done by Florida International University that found that modern manufactured homes performed as well as their site-built counterparts in hurricanes. Now, manufactured housing communities come in two basic categories, land lease and resident-owned. In a land lease community, you own your own home, but you lease the land the home is sitting on, saving you the money of having to buy the land. Your land lease also covers the amenities, clubhouse, swimming pool, tennis courts, bocce court, shuffleboard, etc., and many other unique offerings that communities have. There are land lease communities with fewer amenities, typically smaller and somewhat cheaper. There can also be other pass-through charges, such as ad valorem and non-ad valorem taxes. In a resident-owned community, you own your own home, and you either own a share in the community that owns the land, or you actually own the lot the home sits on. Now, these communities are similar to the HOA communities with conventional housing, but home prices are much less. You will pay monthly HOA fees, but they are usually much lower than the monthly fees paid in a land lease community. The residents elect a board of directors, and the board, usually through a professional manager, runs the community. You may be subject to assessments if the community property needs repair or replacement. Amenities range from the same as those found in land lease communities to none at all, depending upon the community and the interests of the residents. Those attracted to manufactured housing communities also come in two flavors, snowbirds and full-time residents. Now, a snowbird is what it sounds like. During the winter, they fly south, and during the summer, they fly back north. A full-time resident, of course, lives here year-round, while many still visit the kids up north in the summer. There are differences between the two in housing requirements, in your budget, in deciding whether you want to be a resident here or up north, in the case of a snowbird, 
and in your tax treatment because Florida has no income tax. So many choose to make Florida their residence and their place up north their second home. Now let's talk about homes. You can find communities with mobile homes. Those are the ones built before 1976. But it's pretty unusual. Most communities today are manufactured homes. There is an interaction between the home you might want to buy and the communities where it might be available. Resident-owned communities are mostly older homes, but may have some lots available to put a new home in. Land lease communities often have a mix of older and newer homes, and many offer brand new homes. There are also new communities being built. We show one in our video on Sebring. Manufactured homes come in one or two section models. A one section model is often called a single wide and bears some similarity to the older style mobile home. Two section models are assembled together on site and can be indistinguishable from site built homes. The choice you make will depend upon several factors, including how much room you need. Snowbirds often find single section homes are more than enough for several months in the state, and because they are smaller, they typically cost less. But a lot of snowbirds have full size homes, and there are a lot of permanent residents who choose single wide homes either because of the cost or simply because they don't need that much room. If I had to describe an average manufactured home, it would be two bedroom, two bath, and between 1,000 and 1,400 square feet. A typical single wide home is smaller, uh, usually between 600 and 900 square feet. There is as much variety in manufactured homes as there is in conventional models. Those of you who haven't seen our other social platforms can just Google Florida Manufactured Home Living, where you'll find many videos on our YouTube channel and new highlights of Florida lifestyle every day on our Facebook page. We also have a website with a lot of resources for those who are looking for manufactured homes in Florida. This brings up another issue that I commonly run into in comments. The news media would have you believe insurance is impossible to get in Florida, but that simply isn't true. You can get insurance. It's readily available throughout Florida for manufactured homes, that is those constructed after June of 1976. Mobile homes constructed before that date are more difficult to insure, although it's not impossible. Insurance can be expensive depending upon the area and the amount of coverage, but that is true of conventional homes as well. Flood insurance may be required in federally designated flood zones. By the way, another option that a lot of folks use is to self-insure for wind damage but carry a homeowner's policy that covers all other perils, including liability. This can result in considerable savings while keeping you covered in the event of fire, theft, and problems that occur on your property for which you might be liable. Now let's talk a little bit about community living. The single most difficult challenge you will find in a Florida manufactured housing community is trying to remember the names of all the folks you meet when you move in. They'll all remember your name because you're probably the only new one they met that week. But you're going to meet dozens and dozens. Your individual lifestyle is something you get to choose. But if activities interest you, most communities can fill your calendar every week. What are some of the kinds of things you might be doing? Well, in the pool, we have aerobics, lap swimming, volleyball, and just plain socializing. Sports are often tennis, pickleball, bocce, shuffleboard, 
golf on a major size golf course, which many communities include, or miniature golf, we'll find that in some. And in my community, we have driveway golf. Now that sounds kind of strange, but what they do is they set up some astroturf or something with holes and little divots and barriers in individual driveways. And you jump in your golf cart and drive around the community playing a hole at each person's home with a scorecard. The winner is the winner. (laughs) There's darts. There's horseshoes. Uh, We played dart baseball in the last community I was in. Cornhole championships are popular in some communities. There's just the list goes on forever. In the clubhouse, you'll have dinners, dances, shows, luncheons, ice cream socials. In our park, we have something called Coffee Plus, where the HOA offers coffee and donuts to the entire community once a month to get everybody together and once again to meet people. There are also games, poker, euchre, mahjong, cribbage. I play jokers and pegs. There's hand and foot, 313, uh, and almost any game you can imagine is probably played in some community somewhere. Clubs include craft clubs, quilting clubs, kayaking clubs, thrift shop hopping, book clubs, travel clubs, and regional clubs are popular in some parks. Things like Italian clubs, Irish clubs, clubs of all the folks from Michigan, New Jersey, or Ohio. There are woodworking shops and woodworking clubs. Are you getting the idea you can keep as busy as you want? In each of these, you'll make more new friends. Then there is charitable work, social club and committees, and the HOA, all of which can just keep you as busy as you want to be. As you might have gathered, I love talking about manufactured home communities and the opportunities manufactured housing presents in Florida. We will cover much more in upcoming episodes. Be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when a new episode is released. In case you missed it earlier, you can find our other resources by searching for Florida Manufactured Home Living. Now let's get to those three tips I promised you at the start of the broadcast. My number one tip when looking at communities is to spend as much time as you need to looking at the community bulletin boards. It is here you will find the pulse of the community. In an active community, There will be posts from the HOA telling you what they are doing, posts from the community manager, activity sign-up sheets, score sheets, event posters, and much more. This is a great place to really get a feel for what's going on in the community, or in the case of the rare community where there's not too much going on, you'll see that too. My number two tip is to try and rent for a couple of weeks or more in an area that you would like to find a community to move into. If you have a particular community in mind, it's ideal to rent a house in that community. And it's not uncommon as there's always someone who can't make it down and would like to rent their home. This gives you a chance to look at the communities in the area and spend some time talking with folks who live there. My number three tip is Google Earth. This is an application you can find on desktop, iPad, tablet, and even on your phone. This application will give you a satellite view of any community that interests you and allow you to both zoom in and zoom out. You can also select layers and see everything around the community from grocery stores to medical facilities and much more. Quite often, when you visit a community, you come in the front gate, tour around, go out the front gate, and have no idea what's around it. Depending upon the wind, you might not notice something like the sewage treatment plant just beyond the back gate, but you'll see it on Google Earth. I'm sure a lot of this is a repeat for many of my followers on YouTube, but I promise you folks, our podcast series allows me to share 
a lot more than I can in 10-minute videos. We can do interviews with key players in the industry, folks who have already moved into a community, community leaders, and activity directors, and much more. So as I'm fond of saying, stay tuned. <laughs>